Okay kids, today we are at the fort in Mackinac City. The, uh, we'll be going through that in the lighthouse. Um, we're going to make a little afternoon trip is all. It's not a big one. But, uh, and we will turn around here and I'll show you the sign behind us. Cheyenne's already over there taking pictures. You know how to say it? You guys pronounce it for us. It says on here. Okay. Maybe. Okay. But that's where we're at today, right next to the Mackinac Bridge. And uh, let me switch this around and I will get behind the camera instead of in front of the camera. And we'll uh, go from there. Okay. Now you can see the bridge. So we're going to walk down here to the fort. And it's a nice park down here. Plenty of uh, RV parking to give you the information on that stuff. There's the girls. And a uh, nice big parking lot behind you. So, the seagulls scream at you all the time out here for some reason. I guess you tick them off. So, we'll walk over here and uh, check it out. It's been a really windy going across here lately, so they've been having to stop traffic. When it gets too windy, they stop it. So, people out enjoying the weather it's like 60 degrees out here so it's pretty the sun's nice here in the welcoming center the visitor center walk down the path it's actually uh, it is fenced off so they're gonna have demonstrations of the uh, the cannon and what was the other thing Kim that they were talking about the demonstration the military the war. The war reenactment demonstration or something yeah. uh, the um, war program 1777 at war program. Okay. And then the artillery firing demonstration. Cool. Okay. At noon, there's a musket firing demonstration. I don't know what time it is. And you do not have to wear the masks all the time. I said that. Let's see if this works. Bridge. It is so pretty up here. Everything's always so green. To we'll walk down the path here and uh, go to the gate and check it out. Thank you. 
five. Wow. Say that. I want to hear no, you say here. It. You say it. Cheyenne gets to say it this time. Right there. Pequoddy no. <laughs> she still says it. <laughs> yep, yeah, we're coming up the entrance to the fort. They're actually going to show us this. They're going to shoot the canyon at what, 2 o'clock? Today we'll make sure that we get that because I want to see that. Okay, this is more than I thought. Pretty cool. You don't have to wear that. When you go in, you do. You got the community garden like they have down south too. The storage room or storage house. Europeans reached the Straits of Mackinac in the early 17th century. French explorers found the region rich in fur bearing animals so. and well established native trading networks. These animals, especially the beaver, were in high demand in Europe, where their fur was used to make hats and other fashionable garments. French merchants journeyed to the Straits to purchase furs from the Anishinaabek and other native traders. This is held up very well. Now they've went through and you'll see that the, the people are actually in costume and reenactments, college students, to uh, tell the stories and what, the, what they consist of. Stratigraphy, the layers of history. Today, archaeologists carefully excavate the fort in 10-foot square sections based on a grid system that covers the entire community. Within each square, archaeologists work back through time as they dig deeper. The soil on the surface is usually the newest, while deeper layers are generally older. The study of these layers is known as stratigraphy, which archaeologists <coughs> use to understand how people changed and used the landscape over time. At Michelin Mackinac, the stratigraphy can be broadly broken down into five layers, each representing a historic period. Pre-contact and Native American, from before the first Europeans arrived at the Straits. 
French from the construction of the fort in 1715 to the end of French control in 1761. British, reflecting British control of the fort from 1761 to about 1780. Demolition, containing the charred remains of the fort burned by British soldiers as they abandoned Michilimackinac in 1781. And modern, containing everything deposited since the destruction of Michilimackinac. The soil is passed through two sets of screens, which pull out more artifacts, including small objects such as fish bones, seed beads, and lead shot. Each layer is also carefully mapped for future reference. Using this evidence, archaeologists can date the layers, identify buildings, and learn how people lived at Michilimackinac hundreds of years ago. Some of the stuff that have been brought out. That was too cool. Water wall. Mm hmm. Or it used to be one. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty. There are plates mm -hmm. and stuff and bowls that they brought over. So when they moved over to the island, they just burned the buildings so they didn't move. Then these guys came in and rebuilt them, mm -hmm. recreated them. <laughs> well, a good fire going, huh? Guard house. Yeah, seen him. Seen it, um, one of the guys up here. Apparently, he's not walking around. Oh, okay. So they put them underneath. That's where you get to go if you're a bad person. Oh, Don't be a bad person. <laughs> not like the uh, prisons of today. <laughs> Hey, watch the step there. Yeah. I didn't get it on video. The priest's house. Here's where they Yep. The confessional in the church. Big church for. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The holy water bowl. I wonder what the string is, the rope. The bell. Oh yeah, that's right, it would be. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so I don't have my, I've got other expensive You're hobbies. in a different position in here. Yeah, so I don't have to invest in a, you know, right. the clothes that's and cool. things and all that kind of thing. I've got other expensive hobbies that I do. Yeah, the cool thing about you know what we do as museum educators is we spend a lot of our time doing like 
research kind of things, reading and chatting about history of books, and then we also do a lot of time about them. Oh, yeah. Way, uh, there'd be about a pound and a half of powder. It would be a wood sabot. And you know, take the other end of that swab of rammer, <coughs> ram down cartridge that right under Leanne's thumb. And again, the, the ball would be attached to that of the shop. Now we have Leanne prime the glass running water. We never, ever, ever wanted to be behind that gun when it went off. Everybody off to the side. And there were six of the 15 soldiers were dragmen. So once it recoiled, they had to drag it back into the aim spot every time. Mm -hmm. The aim of the gun, the tail strike, reach it, to move it left or right and to pick it up for, for moving as well. And then we have an elevation screw up or down. Now I. Ready, set, rolling commands. Hey, ready! I get my attention, huh? God save the king and happy 4th of July. <laughs> you probably noticed the jerk in the when the cannon went off. Yeah, got my get, got my attention. <laughs> There's a poor little dog over there that jumped. <laughs> it was scared. <laughs> I'm surprised the dog didn't have a heart attack. I think he's had too many steak and potato meals, personally. <laughs> well, guys, we hope that you enjoyed this week's episode. The uh, Michel Mackinac Fort, it uh, was a great time. We uh, had an enjoyable experience. There's a lot there to learn. We just hit on the top of the iceberg there, guys. Um, please subscribe. Next week, we're going to be bringing you the uh, lighthouse down here in Mackinac City. You don't want to miss that because we'll be going through the museum of the uh, shipwrecks and the artifacts that they brought up. It's pretty impressive. But uh, hit that bell so you don't miss that one. And uh, you guys have a great week, and we'll see you next weekend.